Landlords have benefited from the astronomical increase in rents, but most tenants won't pay it. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's going over the fact that due to the fact that apartment occupancy is at this record high, I mean, rents have skyrocketed, okay? And this is a good thing for landlords if you're trying to rent a unit or if you want to keep your your units completely full. I mean, you're not gonna have any issues with that. And this is pretty common throughout the entire country. So this isn't just on the coasts or you know, just here in the Midwest. No, it's everywhere at this point, okay? And the only problem is a lot of these tenants, they won't end up paying these much higher you know, rents because they already are locked into a lease. At least they won't be paying it until their lease ends. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know if you've been able to raise your rents and your units due to just this super high occupancy, okay? This insane rental market, okay? I know that all of my units are full right now, so I don't have any issues with getting my tenants to pay, and I'm, I'm happy about that. And most of the landlords that I've talked to, they're saying the exact same thing. This is what we need after all the garbage we went through last year with all the eviction moratoriums and you know the nonsense with the rental assistance and all these new anti-landlord laws that are going throughout the country. So I'm glad that at least there's a, a slight silver lining to all of this. So this article, it's coming from Bloomberg City Lab and it says, apartment occupancy just hit a historic high. Is that good? There's a silver lining to astronomic US rent hikes. Most tenants won't pay them because they're already locked into their leases. Yeah, but keep in mind in most of the country, now this isn't everywhere, but in most of the country, as soon as a tenant's lease you know, the, the period of their lease ends, like if I have a tenant in a one year lease, well, I can get that tenant to sign a new lease and I can throw a rent hike in there if I want. So even if I just, you know, rented to a tenant and put them in a unit six months ago, well, six months later, six months from now, if they wanna sign the new lease, they might have to sign at a higher rental rate. But let's see what the article says about the situation. Apartment occupancy in the U.S. has hit an all-time high, meaning anyone looking for a new place is going to have a rough time of it. Fully 97.5% of professionally managed apartment units are spoken for as of December, the highest figure on record, according to data from the property management software company RealPage. That's more than two percentage points higher than the occupancy rate in December 2020, a difference that represents hundreds of thousands of households. I don't think most people realize just how crazy that is, says Jay Parsons, deputy chief economist for RealPage. Not only is that a record, typically we consider 95 to 96% to be essentially full. Now, I remember when I got started in real estate investing, you know, back in 2014, okay? So back then, I did all of my calculations based on a 10% vacancy rate. So 90% occupancy, 10% vacancy. Keep in mind, I own just a small, you know, multifamily uh, buildings and single family homes, right? But I thought that, oh, if I can get, you know, 10% vacancy, I'll be doing pretty good. So that's what I based all of my calculations on. Now, currently, if they're talking about you've got 97.5% occupancy and only 2.5% vacancy. I mean, that is a huge, huge increase to all of your numbers and the amount of profit that you can get. So, I mean, this is absolutely great for landlords, okay? But for most tenants, there may be a silver lining to the lack of options. Rents for available apartments have seen record increases over the last year. Yet the occupancy rate suggests that most renters aren't paying those prices. High occupancy rates leave little margin for renters who need to relocate for jobs, education, or other reasons. Winter is the shoulder season when it comes to the moves. Families typically, typically settle in for the cold, the holidays, and the school year, then upend their lives over the summer. The same seasonal pattern applies to forced exits through evictions. 
In 2021, however, the occupancy rate rose steadily throughout the year without the typical seasonal variation, another quirk of the pandemic. Well, if there is a housing shortage, okay, if there's a shortage of places for people to rent and shortage of places for people to buy, there really can't, you know, basically people are going to stay in the units that they have for longer and the people who are looking, they're going to have fewer options to look for. So yeah, the occupancy rate obviously is going to go up even as the winter comes, even as the seasons change. And uh, I mean, I, I think some of this will be, uh, you know, some of the problem will be alleviated come springtime because that's the point in time when a lot more people are going to start putting their houses for sale on the market so right now they have a lot of renters who are renting just because they were unable to find a house to buy and they really wanted to buy a house but you know they they were like hey i can't find anything so we'll rent until something becomes available and right now you know the slow season for buying houses and selling houses but the spring usually brings a lot more people wanting to sell such low vacancy levels reflect a historically high number of renters renewing their leases. The lack of churn means that people hunting for new homes have fewer options. Apartments may be put on the market and leased before tenants leave the unit. Clean, prep, paint, change the carpet, and get the next person in, Parsons says. I know I've tried that before. It's kind of a, a logistical nightmare. So I personally prefer to let people get out of the place and then I can usually get the place rented and only, you know, uh, in less than a month. So, you know, that, that usually works out better for me than trying to work through the logistical nightmare of trying to show the, the unit while a tenant's still living in there and get them, you know, so that I only have a few days to get, get the place cleaned up and ready for the next tenant. Abnormal is, is the pandemic normal, of course. Rents for market rate apartments cratered during the first year of the pandemic as some residents decamped from cities, and more importantly, new renters didn't move in to replace them. Rents fell furthest in the high cost cities, but also dipped in the suburbs of New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and a few other places. This plunge led building owners to offer huge discounts and concessions to try to lure renters followed by steep double digit rent hikes in 2021 as tenants finally return to those buildings. It's not just the large apartment buildings in major metros that are experiencing big swings in rental trends. Rental homes and apartments across the US are witnessing the lowest vacancy rates in nearly 40 years. People just aren't moving. Despite the scramble in spring 2020 following the arrival of the pandemic and the countless stories of COVID-fueled migration patterns, a record low number of households moved between March 2020 and March 2021, according to a report by the Pew Research Center. And a lot of that might have to do with the economic situation, okay? Inflation is skyrocketing. And simply put, it is more expensive now. And if a person has a place that they're living in right now that they can afford, why are they going to go somewhere else and pay more if they haven't received a, a pay increase to meet the amount of inflation? I mean, they just can't. So in terms of people buying houses, a lot of people aren't gonna be buying. In terms of renting a new place if the place you're living in now you can afford the rent on you're just gonna stay now you throw in some of the people's uh, fears of uh, the virus and all that and you're gonna have even less people moving that's why there it's a record low of uh, people you know when it comes to moving and not moving because of this situation for tenants who already signed a lease or never left in the first place spikes in rent listings might not affect them much Landlords face a loss on paper when it comes to filling units, known in the industry as loss to lease. This is the difference between the advertised rent and what renters actually pay. An apartment building owner in Dallas might list a vacant unit at $200 higher than what the renter down the hall is paying. Property owners want to narrow this gap, and in a tight market, they have more leverage. Yeah, and that, that's a good point as well. I don't worry as much about loss to lease, but keep in mind that you know I do have 
a lot fewer units and these big apartment complexes they are valued upon their rental income so it makes a lot more sense they have a lot more to worry about than i do yeah i do uh, you know think about that kind of situation but i think more in terms of when a unit becomes empty then i will raise the rents i don't worry as much about trying to raise the rents as as much when there's already a tenant in there because the the worst situation for a landlord is to have a tenant no have to have no tenant in in your unit to have the tenant or have your unit vacant so having a small loss to the lease isn't nearly as bad as having the unit 100 percent vacant <laughs> Yet that same Dallas landlord marking up vacant units might not want to risk maxing out a current tenant's rent when their lease comes due. It's easier and more cost efficient to keep them in place than uh, paying a less than maximum rent than to search for a new tenant. Very few apartment operators are going to move a household up to full price, Parsons says. Keeping a paying tenant in place is a high priority, especially after the chaos of the last two years. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I just said. And, you know, I mean, obvious, it's, it's pretty obvious, you know. So, yeah, tenants there, there a lot of them are just aren't going to have to pay these these higher rents. But, you know, they, they are going to see some rent increases throughout the entire year. This is good news for landlords, not good news for tenants. And uh, overall, I'm, I'm happy to read this sort of information.